Yes, welcome everyone to Marijuana Time Show. January 25th, 2018. I am your host, Joe Claire, from myself and a lot of other great writers over at MarijuanaTimes.org. Covering all the news and opinion you need from the cannabis community, industry, and beyond. You can also find these videos there, of course, as well. Share them on your social media and networks. You can also search the Marijuana Times on YouTube and Facebook to find the videos and search the Marijuana Times on Apple Podcasts for the audio version of the show. We're talking about stuff from Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Compton today. Marijuana news from all of those places. First, of course, to tell you at the Marijuana Times show is brought to you by NatureSideCannabis.com. NatureSide is a line of all-natural, organic, pesticide products. You don't want to be putting harmful chemicals on your grow, and you also don't want to be running afoul of various pesticide regulations in the state that you are in. NatureSide products are listed on the approved for use in the cultivation of marijuana lists by the Colorado, Washington, and Oregon State Agricultural Departments. So if you're a marijuana cultivator in a legal state, you don't want to be using harmful ke- harmful chemicals, you want to be you want to grow safe and poison free, you want to use naturesidecannabis.com that can help you become regulatory compliant and get you the products you need to do so safely and effectively. Proud sponsor of the Marijuana Time Show, NatureSideCannabis.com. Go check them out. And thank you to them. As always, our first story comes from MarijuanaTimes.org. Julia Granowitz writing over there about the U.S. Attorney from Massachusetts saying that opioids are a higher priority than cannabis. For some, We've reported some... We report a lot on U.S. Attorney reactions to what Jeff Sessions did earlier this month, rescinding the Obama-era Cole memo. U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling from Massachusetts said, quote, I can say that on the one hand, marijuana cultivation and tracking is unambiguously illegal under federal law. Uh, he's also said he cannot guarantee that people won't be prosecuted. Uh, but what he did say during a recent meeting in his Boston Office, he said, quote, the number one enforcement priority for my office is the opioid crisis. 2,100 people in Massachusetts were killed by opioid overdoses last year, not marijuana overdoses. So that is where my resources are going right now. So that's definitely a good thing. You know, a lot of people are concerned with him saying that he couldn't guarantee that there wouldn't be any any uh, crackdowns, any prosecutions. But, and you know... As much as people in the cannabis industry want to take issue with that, U.S. attorneys don't make law. You know, we can urge them all day long to prioritize, you know, for instance, prioritize opioid and the opioid crisis and opioid medications over prosecuting marijuana, and that's valid. But in the end, he's right. Marijuana is illegal on a federal level, and if they feel the need to go after marijuana, they have the legal right to do so. The law needs to be changed. Many people are saying this. I said this many times before on this show. I've said this for many years, in print and elsewhere. The law has to be changed. Federal prohibition causes so many problems for states that are trying to legalize either medically or for adult use. The law needs to be changed. Then we wouldn't have to worry about it. We wouldn't have to worry about what a U.S. attorney thinks about marijuana because it wouldn't be their jurisdiction to do anything about it. They wouldn't have to worry about it. I'm sure a lot of U.S. attorneys could care could not care less. They just, there's no way they care less about marijuana. They don't have to deal with it. They would like, you know, it to be taken off their plate so they can more focus on opioids and things that are actually dangerous to people. I'm not saying that the Massachusetts U.S. attorneys like this, but many probably are. They are, they don't want to, they don't want to deal with it. They want to move on to important things. So Congress needs to step up and get it done. Repeal federal prohibition. It's the only way that this issue is going to be solved and a lot of other issues that federal law causes states. Because no matter what a state does, you can still be arrested on federal charges because it's illegal. Whatever you're doing related to cannabis, it's illegal on a federal level in the United States. So, U.S. Congress, I know a lot of you watch this show, you're watching right now. Get it done. Go, go, shoot. Go do it. Stop watching the show. You know what? Don't watch the rest of the show. Go do it. Go co-sponsor bills. There's plenty of bills in the Congress, the House, and the Senate. Go co-sponsor. Make a speech. 
tweet something out in support, whatever. Go do it. This next story from NewYorkTimes.com. New governor in New Jersey, uh, Phil Murphy, starts to expand medical or access to medical marijuana in New Jersey. Having campaigned on a pledge to fully legalize marijuana, Governor Philip D. Murphy took the first step toward expanding access to the drug in New Jersey on Tuesday, signing an executive order that would ease regulations on the use of marijuana for medical purposes. The new executive order directs the New Jersey Department of Health to conduct a 60-day study of the state's medical marijuana program where they focus on how to increase access to it. The reviews will seek to lift restrictions on doctors in the state who prescribe the drug, review the number of conditions for which the drug can be prescribed, consider the possibility of offering edible marijuana products, and allow more dispensaries to open in the state. Before signing the order, uh, Mr. Murphy, a Democrat, criticized the Christie administration's approach. He said, quote, The system we have inherited can best be described as medical marijuana in name only. Mr. Murphy said during an event in Trenton. Shouldn't they be calling him Governor Murphy? Isn't that the point? Why would you call the governor Mr. Murphy? It's, it's weird. I mean, moving on. With a hostile administration <laughs> tugging the strings of state bureaucracy, the ability of dispensaries to open has been slow-footed. Doctors have faced stigmatiz stigmatization for participating in non-smokable and edible products that could benefit patients have been blocked from the market. In other words, New Jersey has a very restrictive medical marijuana law by design. Chris Christie kept it that way for his two terms in office, as obviously Chris Christie hated marijuana. He's, he never he never missed an opportunity to talk about how bad he thought marijuana was, saying it wouldn't be legalized on his watch, so on and so forth. Adult use marijuana is now making its way uh, through the various mechanisms of government, of state government in New Jersey, and now they're also looking to expanding the medical marijuana program as well, something that should have happened a long time ago, but didn't, of course, because of Chris Christie. And now Mr. Murphy, governor of New Jersey, is getting on that. That's ridiculous. Why? I just, I just noticed that. I read this story like three times, and just now when I was reading it again, out loud, saying Mr. Murphy. That's very bizarre. It's always governor. I, or the governor. But they, they, a few times they call him Mr. Murphy. That's what they call him in every paragraph. Mr. Murphy. He's governor of Jersey. He's Governor Murphy. God, I mean, it's one of the few perks I imagine of being governor. I imagine most of the time it is a pain in the butt. But at least people have to call you governor. But the New York Times doesn't. They're not worried about it. So thank you, Mr. Murphy in New Jersey. You're, you're on the ball. <laughs> You'll get that governor title someday. Slash stories from LATimes.com. Compton voters reject marijuana sales in the city. Earlier this week, Compton voters soundly rejected two competing proposals for regulating cannabis businesses in the city, where marijuana dispensaries and other pot-related operations are now banned. The city's proposal, known as Measure C, would have allowed marijuana sales while imposing a 10% business tax and banning commercial cultivation of marijuana. It was rejected 76% to 23%. The competing initiative, Measure I, included many of the same provisions as Measure C, the call for a 5% business tax and would have allowed for indoor marijuana cultivation businesses. It was rejected 77 to 23. The defeat of both measures means the city's existing ban on marijuana businesses will remain in place. Now, I know on the surface this may look like a horrible thing, but hear me out. Compton, those of you who don't know, used to have kind of a reputation for drugs, violence, poverty, uh, all of that, it was, it, was, it was synonymous with a bad city. It was a city you did not want to go into because there was trouble. A lot of gang violence, a lot of drugs, you know. It's been, a, the, it's been the, the, the subject of, of many a hip-hop song. But I had checked in with Compton in a while, and what's going on there, apparently things are going great. Apparently things are going so great in Compton, California, that they don't need all the extra jobs and the extra tax revenue that would come from allowing marijuana in Compton. I also assume that the city of Compton was able to get rid of all of their illegal marijuana dealers because they don't want legal dealers, obviously, who pay taxes and, you know, have a storefront and stuff. So they got rid of all of their illegal marijuana dealers. They've gotten rid of all the crime and the, the gang violence and the poverty that was a problem for so many years in Compton. They got rid of all that to the point where they can vote 
76% to 23% against having legal marijuana businesses come in, create jobs, and pay tax revenues to the city. So congratulations to Compton for clearing all that up. And you'll notice, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not big on, on, on recent hip-hop. I'm more of an old hip-hop guy. But I don't think there's a lot of songs anymore about how bad it is in Compton because it's so great. It's so great they can say, you know what? No. Legal marijuana storefronts? No. We got rid of all of the illegal marijuana dealers in Compton. We don't, when we want marijuana out of our city, we don't want to bring it back in with legal, respectable, legitimate businesses with storefronts and paying taxes and creating jobs for the people who in Compton, who are no longer in poverty, apparently. They no longer need jobs. They don't need tax revenue. Way to go, Compton. They, they've cleaned things up, and now they don't have to worry about it. They don't need your marijuana money. They don't need your jobs and your tax revenues. Compton's going to be just fine. In case you couldn't tell, in case I'm a bad actor, there's a lot of sarcasm connected to my little speech there. Obviously, things aren't better in Compton. Maybe they're a little bit better. But obviously, poverty, jobs, needing jobs, needing tax revenue, that's all still a thing. Obviously, there are still many illegal marijuana dealers in Compton, which apparently is not a problem. But legal marijuana businesses with a storefront and a store and paying taxes and creating jobs, all that's a problem. It blows my mind that people, no matter how bad their situation is, will say no to jobs. No. No, we don't want jobs. How many politicians and voters themselves will say no to jobs? I mean, we talk about we talk about a lot of things. We talk about, you know, poverty. Poverty is talked about all of the time. What alleviates poverty better than anything else? A job. But the people of Compton, no, they don't want jobs. No. We'll stick with the poverty. You have poverty and jobs. Poverty, jobs. Oh, poverty, poverty. Get your jobs out of here. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And these same people who voted against jobs will then complain about there being no jobs and no businesses in their city. Complain. I don't know what to tell you. You had a chance. You blew it. Compton voters, 76%, 77%, you blew it. So don't complain about there being no jobs. If you're going to reject jobs, we will try to bring you jobs into your city. Just shut up. Shut up about jobs. You don't want jobs. Anyway, that's it for the Marijuana Time Show <laughs> for January 25th, 2018. My name is Joe Claire. We're almost to the end of the week. Thank you to everyone who keeps sharing and liking and commenting on the videos. Help us spread the truth about cannabis and grow the show. It's been getting bigger since we started a few months ago, and it's only going to get bigger from here. Thanks to you all, the watchers and the listeners. Thank you to NatureStrikeCannabis.com, Organic All-Natural Pest Control and Pesticides for being a sponsor of the show. Go check them out. NatureStrikeCannabis.com. This has been the Marijuana Time Show, and we'll see you next time. 